Our next stop is vector algebra, and this begins with two simple operations, vector addition and vector rescaling, made simpler still by the use of components. Given two vectors, u and v, their sum has kth component equal to the kth component of u plus the kth component of v. Rescaling a vector u by some constant c means rescaling each component. So both of these operations just act term by term. That's really simple. But there's one thing you need to be careful of. When doing a vector addition, make sure the vectors are the same size. They have the same number of components. Otherwise, you can't do that. OK, a couple of properties. First of all, vector addition is commutative. u plus v equals v plus u. That's totally obvious. There's an identity, so there's a zero vector, all components are zero, and that does nothing under vector addition. And finally, vector subtraction is defined by multiplying the second term by the constant negative one and then adding. Okay, so we've got vector addition, subtraction, scalar multiplication, great. That's the algebraic approach. But there's also a geometric or visual interpretation of this as well. Now, vector addition can be thought of in terms of concatenation. So think of a vector as a difference between two points. Then to add the vector v to the vector u, take the tail of v and put it at the tip of u. Then the sum u plus v goes from the beginning of u to the end of v. And what's nice about that visual interpretation is you can see many of these algebraic properties. For example, commutativity becomes this uh, parallelogram identity. All right, that makes sense. Uh, what about rescaling? Well, multiplication by a scalar is stretching out a vector while keeping the direction the same. So if I double a vector v, then all of the components double in size. It's as if you've stretched it out to twice its length. And vector subtraction then makes sense in terms of multiplying all components by negative one. That keeps the vector the same as far as length, but reverses direction. Don't forget that visual interpretation. It's going to be so useful. Now, we've spoken of the length of a vector, but it's time to define it a bit more formally. Given a vector v, the length of v, written with those, uh, those double absolute value signs, is defined as the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of v. Now, this makes a lot of sense if you think about a vector as a difference between two points. It's really the distance. Now, sometimes we'll call this the length of v. Sometimes we'll call this the norm of v. Whenever we refer to a unit vector, that's going to be a vector of norm 1. OK, here are a couple of facts. Can you prove these based on the definition? I'm going to start with fact number two, because it's easier to prove. That is, a vector has length 0 if and only if it is the 0 vector. So there are two things to prove there. Next, if you rescale a vector v, then its length changes by a factor of what you rescaled it by in absolute value. Now, both of those are things that you should be able to prove with a little bit of work. But the first and most important fact is a bit harder. This is called the triangle inequality. And it says that the norm of u plus v is less than or equal to the norm of u plus the norm of v. See if you can prove that. Here's a hint. It's called the triangle inequality. All right, now lines and planes uh, have really nice parameterizations using vectors instead of some of that sloppiness that we had earlier in terms of uh, directions or multiple slopes or things like that. OK, let's think about how vectors work to parameterize lines and planes. You use the parameter to rescale tangent vectors. So for a one-dimensional line in n-dimensional space that is parallel to a vector v and passes through a point x0, you can describe the points on that line parametrically in vector notation, saying that x of t is x0 plus t times v. So when t equals 0, you're at the point x0. And as t evolves, you're moving parallel to the v-axis. And notice the use of vector addition in there to make that work. 
Okay, so for a one-dimensional line in Rn, you have one parameter, but for a two-dimensional plane in Rn, you have to have two parameters and two tangent vectors. Let's say u and v, and again, you want to parameterize a plane that passes through a point x0. Then the formula for doing this is as follows. x of s and t, those are your two parameters, is x0, the base point, plus s times u, plus t times v. Okay, that's the formula, but uh, students sometimes have trouble grasping what that means intuitively. So let's think about that. It's uh, as if you've got these two vectors that are independent, not parallel, be careful with that, and you have this base point x0, and you have these two parameters, s and t. So think of the st plane, and now what I want to do is map that parameter plane over to my plane in n-dimensional space by sending the origin to x0, and then aligning the s-axis with the vector u, and the t-axis with the vector v. And doing that is how you parameterize this plane. Again, you need two parameters and two tangent vectors.